Hey everybody, this is the first tutorial in a multi-part series where I will be detailing all of my steps for microwave centering aluminum. To set expectations for what you'll learn in this series, I'll be taking these green aluminum parts that were printed on my consumer grade printer and walk you through step by step how we get from this to a full metal part. In today's video, I'll be focusing on terminology and will provide a general understanding of what I'll be talking about in each subsequent video. Even if you're a longtime subscriber and are familiar with my latest workflow, it may still be useful since a few steps of my process have changed. For starters, I'd like to define what centering is and some of the benefits and constraints that you need to be aware of if you're interested in choosing this technology for the job. The simplest way to describe the process while keeping it in the context of powdered metals is to fuse those powders together at high temperatures without exceeding the melting point of the material. The last point is crucial because when dealing with 3D printed parts such as these, fully melting the metal would distort or ruin the shape of your part, but not getting close enough would mean that the part would be weak and actually break. Density and shrinkage are two of the things that need to be considered. I'll be doing a deep dive on this topic in a later video, but wanted to mention that centering will result in shrinkage that needs to be accounted for, and most center parts will be in the range of 80 to 95% density. The lower spectrum may be useful if your applications can benefit from porous materials, while the higher you go, the strength of your final part will increase at the expense of more shrinkage. There's various technologies being used in industry today, but broadly speaking, the process for producing parts can be lumped into either single stage, where a metal is directly centered, or a multi-stage, where the intermediate green part is produced first prior to centering. The process of metal FFF, or fused filament fabrication, that I'll be focusing on is the latter, multi-stage. Prior to centering, a green part is printed at normal 3D printing operating temperatures because the metal powder is bound in a PLA equivalent binder rather than being fused at the time of printing. Once printed, these green parts need to be debound, or in other words, have the binder removed while leaving the metal powder behind in the shape of our part. Although there are a few options for metal FFF, I work primarily with the Virtual Foundries filament. I'll of course be linking their store page below as well as all of my equipment in the description of this video. Up to this point, everything I've talked about is very standard procedure for printing metals with virtual foundry filament and can be found in much greater detail on their website. However, this is where I'll be deviating from the path by introducing standard household microwaves in the process. You see, for the binding and centering to occur, you need high temperatures which is where a traditional programmable kiln would come in. While I and many others have access to these kilns, they're out of reach for many reasons to others. In my workflow though, a microwave oven is used together with what I've dubbed as modular heating elements. These elements are made of a special but simple set of ingredients that when put together in a microwave, they act as a heat collector and take the place of a traditional programmable kiln. In addition to some of the obvious benefits of using a microwave, like the ramp speed or low cost, portability, it's also been the only way that I've been able to successfully center reactive materials like aluminum and titanium. These materials are very reactive and normally require a vacuum furnace in various blends of atmosphere. Nitrogen, hydrogen, you get the idea. This sort of setup is incredibly expensive and really is only accessible to large companies. Now that I've covered some of the basic concepts for metal FFF, I'd like to answer a question that many of you are probably wondering. What do I absolutely need to just get started? While I have several pieces of equipment that are nice to have, I'm going to limit this initial list to what is absolutely necessary. I've also broken the equipment down into two groups safety, and production. A few disclaimers though. Centering metals is very dangerous and should not be done somewhere with poor ventilation or where fire risk is high. Production. You'll need a 3D printer with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle or 0.8. I would recommend a direct drive, but a Bowden printer will work. 
I'm also using Virtual Foundry Filament, so I will be focusing on this, and I will also be focusing on the aluminum filament. You will also need an alumina crucible with a lid, refractory ballast, centering carbon, heating elements, dedicated shop microwaves. Also, do not cook in these again. These are strictly for the shop. Portable fans or shop fans or some sort of ventilation system that you have installed. You'll need a high temperature infrared thermometer that can reach up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Flux. Specifically, I'll be using an aluminum brazing flux, but some metals might not need this. Post-processing and cleanup? At least, you'll need a rotary tool with a wire brush attachment, a filing set, and sandpaper, but I'd like to recommend at least a few better tools as well. A vibratory tumbler works very well when trying to deburr and polish these parts. And additionally, a sandblasting cabinet is even better. You can get these fairly cheap on Amazon, but it does also require an air compressor to work. The second question that I'm sure you're typing right now after hitting that subscribe button is, how much money will a basic setup cost me? To answer, I'm going to take a similar approach to the parts list where I'll be detailing minimum cost. Be mindful that if you spend a little bit more money, then your success rate should go up and time that you spend should go down. In this price estimate, I'm also factoring in the cost of a 3D printer, so if you have one already, you can deduct that cost from this estimate. Also, considering the plethora of 3D printer options and price points out there, I'm going to just settle on about tree pity for the cost of a printer. Taking the equipment that I listed previously, let's add some average costs and do some math the old fashioned way. Okay, yeah, I know throwing a list into ChatGPT is sort of cheating, but in all reality, it came up with a pretty close estimate. My actual costs are also going to be a little bit inflated from yours because I've been trying to figure this process out as I go and not everything I bought was necessary. But I will say I've spent a good bit less than 3K for my microwave centering setup, which is pretty unheard of for similar technology and very approachable for makers, tinkerers, and small scale labs. I'm sure there are plenty out there wondering why someone would even consider venturing into a pretty experimental process for metal part production, especially when this has been sort of figured out for a long time. Well, to answer that, I think I'll just leave some of the possibilities and benefits that excite me about this technology, and let the viewers who have stuck with me this far fill in the gaps from there. After all, this is just another tool in the toolbox, and I think that the best results will always end up coming from several different technologies being used in tandem, in no particular order. I hope you'll join me in my next tutorial where we'll be doing a deep dive into printing our green parts with aluminum filament like these. This tutorial series has taken a lot of effort to produce, especially when the R&D is taken into consideration. So, if you'd enjoy this and look forward to my next video, please consider subscribing. Cheers!